Hey you guys, thank you for watching. This is Ichi K from Montane Zone Music. We're shooting another three albums episode. And today we're with Ryan Blackwell of Boogie Records in Nederland, Colorado. All right, how long have you been in business? It'll be four years in April. Oh wow. Yep, four years up in Nederland. Nice. Yeah. I'm stoked to have you up here. Thank you. Um, so tell us how you got into records. Well, I've been a music fan my whole life. Um, and probably it's been almost 10 years ago um, is when I got into vinyl. Um, the resurgence is at its peak right now, but it really started building, like I said, about 10 years ago. And I, you know, kind of wanted to revisit records. And I'll never forget, it was a Fu Manchu record. It's an album that I had on CD. I'd heard a thousand times on CD and bought the vinyl at one of their concerts. And the first time I heard it, it was a life-changing experience. It was like oh. hearing, not hearing it for the first time, but the depth of sound, the, the, the things that I heard on that vinyl that I didn't hear on the CD format absolutely blew my mind. And from that second on, I have just been a major vinyl addict. Nice. All so, right. And started collecting then and huh? had been collecting records for, yeah, about six years when I decided to open my own store and turn my, my passion slash hobby into a business. And yeah, it's, it's been a real fun four year ride so far. Oh, great story. All right. Fu Manchu. Full disclosure, um, I'm going to quiz Ryan on three records and I, I gave him a lead time on this so he could think about it and, and pick his three for each of my questions. But I don't know what they are yet, so that's going to make it a little more fun. So we're going to start with number one, and that would be, what is a record that everyone should have in their collection? Really loaded question. I thought about this quite a bit, and I'm really happy with my decision. One record I think every everyone should have, certainly every fan of rock music should have, is Are You Experienced yes. by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. One of the most mind-blowing, groundbreaking albums of all time. 50 plus years after its release, it still sounds as amazing today as it did when it came out. Nice. Excellent choice. Yes. I have for Thank a very you. long time. I, yes. You have that in my collection? Jimmy. Vinyl? Yeah, this is great. Jimmy, the greatest electric guitarist of all time. It's like you've got an original reprised version. Yep, that's an original pressing straight from my home collection. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quick side question, when you opened your record store, how much of your home collection became part of the store? Uh, when I first opened my store four years ago, I had about 500 records at home, and I had very little inventory, so I had to pick from my own collection. And I found it was easier than I thought to, to, to purge my collection. Weed a few things out. Yeah, at the time it was, if I can replace it, then I can sell it. Um, so I would say at least 200 oh. or so uh, records from home um, came to the store okay. for day one. Nice. And it's been fun replacing those <laughs> yeah. over the, the last four years. Probably not hard because you probably buy bulks of records, right? Yeah, well, some, yeah. And my philosophy to this day is if, if I can replace it, I'm I'm more than content selling it. You know, letting letting that record go to, you know, a good home. No. Nah. There are certainly some that I regret selling that are oh, you know, sure. hard to get now, but sure. that's the, the name of the game. All right, excellent number one. So number two is an album in your collection that is a personal favorite, maybe something unique to your collection and not everyone else. Okay, well, um, quite possibly uh, high on my list of all-time favorites is an album called Field Songs by the late, great Mark Lanigan. Wow. My all-time favorite singer. For the past 30 years, he's been my favorite singer. I've followed him really closely and he just passed away last year, but this, I couldn't live without this album. Oh, wow, okay. I'm not super familiar. He was the singer of what band? He's Mud, most, Mud Honey? Uh, no, he's most famous for uh, being the singer of the Screaming Trees. Oh, that's right. I knew it was a Seattle grunge yeah. era band. Yeah, 
definitely Screaming Trees were. But they weren't really a grunge band so much. They were they, they were categorized as grunge, but they were more psychedelic, heavy psychedelic rock than grunge. Um, he also sang with Queens of the Stone Age. He's put out multiple solo albums. Um, he just has a, a tone in his voice and a way of of writing songs. He's got the deep kind of gravelly kind of whiskey soaked voice uh-huh. on par with Tom Waits, oh, yeah. Jim Morrison, but just, like I said, my all time favorite. And uh, this album in particular is absolutely my favorite. All right. So this is on Sub Pop. What year yes. was that released? That's an excellent question. 2001. Okay. Yes. This is, I'm thinking probably his third or I think his fourth solo album. Okay. Cool. All right, well, we're going to move on to album number three to close out the show. And album number three would be a record that's been turning you on recently. What's something? Yes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a new band, but okay. just something that seems to find its way in your turntable a lot lately. So the most original and innovative album I've heard in a decade is Murder of the Universe by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Oh, wow. Kind of a ridiculous name. Yeah. But the most incredible band on the planet today. Yeah, these guys are crazy. I have listened to these them a little bit. Absolutely amazing. One of the most prolific bands out there. I think they have put out 26 studio albums in nine years. You're shitting me. No, it's oh, unbelievable. I didn't realize that, wow. And this album floored me, like I said, more than any album has in a decade. Wow. It is absolutely incredible. Mind blowing. Is it a double record or is it nope. just presented in gatefold? It just presented in this yeah. gatefold. Okay. And uh, one cool thing about this record is it comes on vomit splattered vinyl, <laughs> which makes sense when you listen to the album. That's but, awesome. But yeah, this is this album and this band are just amazing. Yeah. All right. That's another band I need to dive deeper yes. into. I guess. I'd, Absolutely. People come in my store all the time asking, hey, you know, what's your favorite band? What do you recommend? And King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is always my answer. They're all over my walls. <laughs> they are, yeah. Yeah, I, I see one over there with the more oh, splatter vinyl. Yes, yes, so, yes, yeah. Well, that about does it, I think, for three albums. Uh, Ryan, thanks for sharing. Yeah, thanks, Eric. It was my pleasure. Yeah, super cool. Um, so tell people, if they want to come up and shop some records, where are you? Yeah. So I'm at 150 North Jefferson Street in Nederland, Colorado, right in the, the center of town. Can't miss me. Got a big sign you can see from the highway, but I think it's full of some really cool records and I get new stuff every week and right. it's definitely worth the trip. Nice. All right. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Uh, click subscribe for more music video goodness. Bye-bye. All right. Scott, awesome. People come by just to see me.